Hi, I'm Taylor of Taylor and Crochet and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make these little booties right here and this little tail for photo booth props. This is part of the Ash and Tay uh, challenge. It's our first one. So our famous Dino 4 for Ava Grace's fourth birthday party. This Ashley of A Crafty Concepts little girl. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how I made these. I'm going to make some mini versions for you guys real quick. But all the materials, hook size, what kind of yarn I use, if you want to know, any worsted weight yarn will work for this project. But all the information is in my blog. And I'm just going to start with the body of the tail and how you'd go about doing that. Then I'll do the fins, how to attach them. Then we'll go on to the feet and I will show you how I did these pretty little pink toenails. So for this project, you're going to need two strands. So what I did is just took my skein of yarn over to my yarn winder. I pulled it from the middle. I wound up one and then I'm still using the skein. Um, if you don't have a yarn winder, don't worry about it. I actually did this whole project. Like I bought the yarn when I was visiting my brother in Ohio and I used the skein. I pulled one strand from the outside and one strand from the center. So if you have a center pull uh, ball of yarn, that'll totally work and it's totally doable. But it's just a little bit easier if you have them in two separate piles here. So you're going to use two strands and an 8 millimeter hook. And if, I don't remember exactly what yarn this is, but it is on my blog if you guys want to get the same exact yarn I did. I do remember it was a really affordable yarn. Any worsted weight yarn will work though. So the pattern says to start chaining 36. Um, I'm going to chain not that many because I'm just showing you guys real quick how you're going to do this. Let me see what I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have ten right here. But you guys are going to chain 36. And the pattern says for row one to do a half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So we're going to count one, two, three. And we're going to make a half double crochet in there. And then we're going to half double crochet in each chain all the way across. Um, if you guys don't remember what a half double crochet is, it's just a yarn over, insert hook into the next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. And there are a lot of great tutorials on YouTube that will thoroughly explain that for you guys if that's not quite your level yet. But basically we're going to half double crochet all the way down the row. And then this hook, you guys, I'm going to have any questions on it. This was from Dave Rose. Um, she doesn't sell them anymore, but I think she linked them on Amazon. So I'll include that Amazon link below for you guys, anyone who's interested in this hook. It's kind of like a clover hook. Um, it's not uh, more of like a Bates or I can't think of the other brand right now, but this is more of a clover hook tip, which I love clover hooks. Um, they work the best for me, but if you like clovers, then you'll probably like this one too. At the end of the row, you chain two, you turn your work, and then the first thing is you are going to half double crochet two together. So to do that, you're going to yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, and then normally to do another a normal half double crochet, you'd yarn over and pull through all three, but we're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all the loops on the hook. And that makes it so that you have two half double crochets made into one. And then we're going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way down the row. And you guys, this is going to be a lot bigger than mine because like I said, you guys are starting with 36 change and I'm just making a mini version to start so I can show you guys. Um, when you get to the last two stitches of the row, you're going to do, again, the yarn over, insert hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all loops on hook. Um, if you haven't done a half double crochet two together or half double crochet decrease before, uh, I would suggest trying it with like a five millimeter hook and only one strand just to practice a little bit until you get the hang of it because it can be a little confusing when you're doing it with two strands, but trust me, it's a lot easier than it sounds. So you're going to chain two again, turn your work, yarn over, you're going to insert, half double decrease again, 
So you're gonna half double crochet two together in the first stitch, half double crochet all the way across until you get to the last two stitches, which I am there. So I'm going to insert, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. And you're gonna continue doing this where you have two decreases at the end of the row. So each row, your stitch count should go down by two. So I'm going to make two together. And then I'm at a point in mine because this is what the tip of yours will look like, basically your tail, where I did uh, half double crochet two together and then I'm going to instantly half double crochet the next two together because I only have two more stitches left on the row. And then I'm going to chain two. And then the very last row you do on this tail is going to just be half double crocheting the last two stitches together. And then that will leave you with a pointed tip. And then right here, I would leave a decently long tail. I would leave it like probably three times the length of your project. So if your tail is 10 inches in length, I would leave a 30 inch tail. And then you just can chain, pull through like that. So this is your tail. Your guys' is going to be a lot wider and a lot longer, but you're going to basically take your tail and we're going to just sandwich it in half. This is the point we ended on. This is the side right here. This is our row one that we started on. So we're just going to fold it up and then you would whip stitch this all the way up the side so that there's just an opening on the bottom. Let me get my yarn needle. So I'm just going to fold it in half and I think this is a whip stitch you guys. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't 100% know but I'm pretty sure this is a whip stitch. And I just go through one side, out the other and then I come back to the same side. I always go, on, go in on this side and out on that side. Uh, you can do like a mattress stitch which is more like I think it's like in this way and then you come back, back and forth. It really doesn't matter. You could even uh, slip stitch this together if you wanted to. So you would do this all the way up your tail and then you could tie it here like that. And then I actually, all my ends I shoved inside of here to give it a little bit of stuffing and then I think I'm going to just whip stitch the end of this closed. Um, so, but basically what I just did right here is like the end of this tail. But you guys, this is gonna be this long, but that's the basic construction of it if you're wondering how to do the tail part. And then I would just shove all these little ends, oops, there goes my yarn needle, <laughs> right in there. And that is my tail. I guess this would make a great Barbie doll size dinosaur tail. But on to the next step, that is the fins. And so for the fins, I'm just gonna show you guys with this blue. Um, I did not yarn wind this one into a ball yet. So, uh, these were, they take substantially less yarn. So if you don't have a yarn winder, zoom out here for you. If you guys don't have a yarn winder, that's okay. I just pulled out like two or three yards or so of yarn from my, uh, skein here. And then I'm just going to fold it in half. So maybe like three yards, just pull out and fold it in half. And then that's how you're going to get your double stranded and you don't have to worry about doing another cake. So double stranded, you're just going to tie on. And then for these, so for the first fin, you're going to start with chaining 11. Um, and each fin gets smaller as you go. This is the chain 11, chain 11. This would be chain nine, chain nine chain seven and chain five. Since I made a mini tail, I'm just gonna start with like the chain seven so you guys get the idea, but you make the fins the same every time. It's just a, the only thing that's different is the number of chains that you start with. So I'm going to chain seven, one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. And you are going to single crochet into the first or the second chain. So you're going to skip one and single crochet into the second chain. And basically it's the same idea as we did with the tail where the first row you make your just uh, your stitches all the way across. And then we're going to chain one. We're going to turn our work. And then here we're going to single crochet two together or single crochet decrease. For single crochet ones, you just uh, insert your hook, pull up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch and pull up another loop and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And then you would single crochet across until there were two more stitches left and then the last two you're going to insert your hook pull up a loop then the next stitch you're going to insert a hook pull up a loop and then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three and that makes your first stitch and your last stitch into one essentially and then so you're going to yarn over turn your work insert your hook pull up a loop insert your hook into the next stitch pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And then this one again is going to be, since it's the last two stitches on the row, we're going to insert our hook and then insert our hook into the next stitch and pull up a loop as well. And then the very last one you do, you're going to chain one and turn and you're just going to single crochet, decrease these last two together. And again, you have a triangle and it's a shorter and fatter triangle than your tail is. I'm just going to tie off. I'm going to leave a little bit longer of a tail. And then again for these, we're going to fold the triangle in half and make it like a little fin. And we're going to sew do our yarn needle and whip stitch along the bottom edge and the front edge. So these are not left open. So what I like to do is just shove that little end already in there and that just gives them a little bit of bulk and then I would use the end that I left longer and whip stitch around. So like I said, this is my triangle. I'm just gonna fold it in half to make the fin, take my yarn needle, and whip stitch around. So here is my little fin. You can put them on so that they would be on your tail tall ways. You can put them on, I think I did mine where the bottom seam that I seamed in half went right on and this is the front seam if you want to do it exactly how I did mine. But basically you're just going to take this, your little fin, and you're just going to whip stitch it. I went up through the bottom here and then I come back down through, up through the bottom, through the gray side back down through the blue, up through the gray, back through the blue. And that's how you're going to attach them all the way down. I have the exact number of starting chains for each of these in the pattern. Um, and like I said, they're made the exact same way every time. And that is how basically the construction of the tail goes. So I hope that that helped clarify anything. If you have any questions, um, there is a little stitch chart, I think, for at least the feet on the pattern, but this is very basic. So um, if you're still confused after seeing this, definitely go check out the written pattern. If you're still confused after that, reach out to me and I will help you best I can. So now we are going to go on to making the feet. So 
if you didn't want to have this hole here if you wanted to make it where they just strapped it set it on and strapped it around their hand or their foot uh, you would just basically do all half double crochets around this but I think that this can be used for your hands or your feet with the hole in it and I like it as is so that's how I'm going to show you guys how to do it so again we are going to take this and for this pattern we're going to start with double stranded again and chain 10. And if you alter the size of this um it's important to keep an even number of for your starting chain so that this part for the hole like if you need to make the hole a little bit bigger if you kids like still have their sneakers on or something and can't get their feet through there um i can show you how to do that as well so i'm gonna start with chain 10 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Okay, so we're gonna half double crochet, that's what we're doing. We're going to yarn over and half double crochet in the third stitch from hook. So you're going to have eight half double crochets once you finish this row. Because the chain two at the beginning does not count as a stitch. So once we get to this point, we're going to chain two turn our work and in the very first stitch we are going to make two half double crochets in the same stitch so you just make a normal half double crochet and then go right back into the same stitch and make two then you're going to make in the next stitch one half double crochet and then again in the next one after that one more and then in the next stitch, we're actually going to slip stitch. We're going to slip stitch into the next two. So that's just inserting, pulling up a loop and pulling it through, insert into the next one, pull up a loop and pull it through. So it went two half double crochets in one stitch, one half double crochet in the next stitch, one half double crochet into the next stitch, then slip stitch into the next two, and then half double crochet into the next, half double crochet into the next, and then two half double crochets in the last stitch on your row. One and two. So, and that gives you like the little dip. If you wanted to make this foot wider, you could do two half double crochets in the beginning, then one in the next one, and then instead of doing a half double crochet in the third stitch, you could just do a slip stitch, slip stitch, slip stitch, slip stitch, and then do half double crochet and then two in the last one. So instead of doing two half double, or sorry, two slip stitches, you'd do four, and that would make this opening a little bit wider. So we're going to chain two, turn our work. And in this one, we are going to half double crochet in the tops of the four half double crochets from the row before. If you made this a little bit wider, you would half double crochet in three. But for the pattern as it's written, it's going to be four. So we're going to do one, two, three, four. And then you're going to chain four. One, two, three, four, and then we're gonna go um, skip these two slip stitches and then go right into these four half double crochets. Also here, if you wanted to make this hole a little bit bigger, you could add five or six chains instead of just four. I mean, there are a few ways to alter this to make this fit any foot size. And you can always just make it longer as well. And so right now, we have made our little hole. So I'm going to chain two again and turn. Turn my work. And then I'm going to half double crochet into each stitch and each chain all the way across. So I have one, two, three, and this is my fourth into the top of that. And then I'm going to do four into the chain stitches. 
which these can be a little bit tricky to go into, but just make sure that you get four going across. So now I have a total of eight done so far, and then I have four more in the last four half double crochets that I made in the previous row. So I'm finishing with 12 total stitches on row four. And then the rest of this part of the foot is pretty easy. You're just gonna chain two and half double crochet across and then you're going to do that for as many rows as you want for the length. I believe I did six rows for my pattern for this length. I don't have any toddlers to test this on but from what Google tells me that should cover their foot. <laughs> so I'm hopefully we'll be able to send these to Ashley and she can snag some photos of Ava wearing them and when I get those I'll be able to share them on my blog for you guys. So if you're seeing this, check my blog in like a week or two, and hopefully I'll have some cute pictures on there of a little model wearing my Dino 4 photo booth props. Okay, I'm going to do one more row of half double crochets, and then I'm going to show you guys how I did the toes. Okay, so if you guys were at row six, that is when you would tie off. I'm tying off here so I can show you guys the next step. Okay, so for the toes, again, you're gonna get your contrasting color yarn out. I would just pull a little bit extra, pull like two yards out probably will be plenty. Fold it in half because you want it double stranded. And then I think you want to chain four or five. Chain five. And then single crochet into the first stitch. And then each, or sorry, the second chain. So you're gonna have four single crochets in the first row. So you're gonna skip the first chain, single crochet into the next one, and single crochet into each stitch across. So to start, you have four half double crochets. We're going to chain one and turn. Just like the fins we made, you guys, we're gonna single crochet two together, the first two stitches. We're gonna insert our hook, pull up a loop, insert our hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. And then right again, we have another, we're at the last two stitches, so we're gonna insert, pull up a loop, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on hook. We're gonna do chain one, we're gonna turn it over, and then we're going to insert again and do another decrease, so insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all of them. And so this gives you and then I just cut off quite a long tail, longer than you think you're gonna need. I just got mine way, way long. Um, but because this toe is like a little flimsy, so you might notice that this one's kind of holy, and then this one that I have on here doesn't look like that, and I'm gonna show you guys why. So the first thing you wanna do is with your long tail, you're gonna put that it's a little excessive. You're gonna put your long tail on your yarn needle. And then what I did was kind of go through, because I need to get down here anyways. And I just kind of whip stitched my way the extra yarn throughout this along the edges. And that just helped like firm up my toes. You can go like through here and go out the other side and just kind of weave your yarn in and out. But I'll just start like that. I got it down, so I started 
up here is where my yarn came out and I we weaved it around the edge right here and then I just stuck it through the bottom so I came out that corner. I'm going to stick that right on the bottom here of my pattern and I'm going to go let this step out of the way. I'm going to go under the outermost side of my gray. Well, okay. So I'm going to go under there. I'm going to pull it tight right there. Then I'm going to go through the top of the blue. And then I'm coming through the back of the gray. So I'm coming out the back of the gray through the top of the blue. And you're just going to keep repeating that and you're just whip stitching this little toe right on there. Um, we're just going to evenly space them as much as possible. They do not have to be perfect. I mean, they're going to be worn on little toddler baby feet, so I have a feeling they're going to get a little bit dirty, and I also don't think they're going to notice if your toes aren't perfectly spaced. And so that is how I attach my first toe. And then what I like to do when I get over to this side would just be to knot this over here so it's just very secure. And then again, I'm just going to take my little end and I'm just going to weave it through. And I just weaved mine back and forth just like this through the toe. I'm literally just, you guys, I'm going just anywhere randomly through that I can get my needle and just pulling it through. And this just really, really like helps firm up the toe and give it a little bit more shape and a little bit more hold. And then you can just kind of like tug and pull it however you want it to be. But it's really super simple. It's amazing how much this just firmed up those little toes on here. But yep, once you feel like you've got it like secure enough and you're like, okay, I feel like my toe is pretty dense. You can just weave it through and then cut off the other ends. So I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to weave that one through, but I weaved this one through already, so I'm going to snip that one. I'm going to pick up my other end of my yarn that I tied it to. And I'm just going to weave this one in through there as well. And then I'm just going to snip that. And that is what uh, one blue toe looks like on your yarn. So basically you're going to repeat the same thing. Chain five, uh, single crochet into the second chain from hook, single crochet across. You're going to chain one, turn your work, and then single crochet decrease, single crochet decrease, chain one, turn, single crochet decrease. That gives you your toe. That is the pattern that's written on my blog if you guys need to like reread that again if that was too quick for you. But I did four little toes on mine, and I think this was six rows. Maybe eight rows. I'll have to look. Definitely check the pattern, you guys, but you can guess about how long they were. This was row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, row six. So maybe this was seven, eight, nine. So nine rows for the foot. And then four toes, and... Uh, I know that was a little quick and a little mini, but I hope that this tutorial will help you guys finish this. As far as attaching your fins, so let me say, I have a few ideas of how I wanted to do this. I really think my shoelace idea would be great if there are adults to help, but I also have this Velcro says sew on hoop and loop fastener. So if you had like one of those little metal loops, you could sew one of those on. I think you could actually just take this and this comes in two separate pieces that the one I bought, I believe I got this at Joann's in like the bargain bin or something. Velcro's pretty cheap, you guys. But I would just do like the soft side and you could do either one end In one end of the hard side and then either sew them on there with your sewing machine or just make a little loop with your yarn 
So you would take your yarn and make yourself a little loop and just sew it on there and tie it with your yarn needle. And then they could use that and Velcro around their little waist. I think Velcro would be a great idea for that. And then also if you have like an extra belt laying around, if your toddler has a belt um, that they wear that would fit most kids at the party or if you're just playing make-believe, then obviously that would fit them perfectly. I think elastic, I have this elastic. You can buy elastic. Um, would work great and then just sew it on like I said with a loop or use your sewing machine and then you would sew the ends and then this would be like a band that they could just slip around their waist and shimmy on up for that or also another great idea you guys is just shoelaces I got these at the dollar store they usually have like a basic black white and maybe like a gray pack and a shoelace will definitely fit around a toddler's waist you could just thread it right through the project and then they can just tie it in a bow around their waist for photos or when they want to play with it. So those are all great options for attachment. If you think of anything else that you think would work great for attaching them, definitely let me know and leave them in the comments below. And then we can share them with other people. So I think for me, I am personally going to seam the end. I shoved all my little ends and bits and bobs in there just to give it a little bit more bulk. But I'm going to sew that closed and then... Uh, attach a way for Ava to wear this around and then also for these ones you can again add the elastic just sew the elastic on to two points and then that will hold it from like flopping around when they walk it'll just hold it firm thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see all the awesome things you guys make